Hi, um, welcome to the next video lecture and introduction to machine learning. We are talking about classification and regression trees and specifically here we'll talk about stopping criteria for building such a tree and pruning such a tree, so reducing its size. Okay. Um, now, this recursive partitioning procedure that we use to grow um, a classification and regression tree Right? Remember, in every node we do this greedy optimization and exhaustive search over all features and all possible split points to find the one split that gives us an optimal uh, result in terms of impurity reduction or empirical risk minimization. Two perspectives on the same thing. Yeah? So, um, this recursive partitioning where we split up every node into ever ever smaller sub nodes and sub sub nodes and so on and so forth that would run until basically our tree has one leaf for every observation yeah that's the logical consequence we just let that run forever um now the first problem with this is this obviously this would take a very very long time yeah um because if you think about um how expensive this gets Every time you do a split, or every time you go one level deeper in your tree, let's say, you double the amount of uh, leaves that your tree has. Yeah, so it's doubling every time. Um, so every time you go one level deeper, well, you have to do exponentially more work to look then again through all possible split points of all possible features in each of these nodes. So it grows exponentially with the number of leaves in your tree. Yeah, the effort. The second point is that this wouldn't even be particularly useful because, well, if you have a tree that is so complex that it has essentially one leaf for every observation in the training data, that will not generalize well to new and unseen data. So you will overfit the training data because your tree is just way too complex. Yeah? The, the structures that your tree represents, they're not anything real or systematic. They basically just reflect the random things that you have in your training data if you let the tree run forever. The third problem is of a different nature. It's um, basically a, a, a consequence of how we build the tree. It's hard to tell when you're looking at a specific node whether it's going to be worth it to subdivide that node further. Yeah, because we don't know what the branch that branches off these nodes, what that will look like. Yeah, so we, we can't really, we don't see. We have a so to say, a problem with the horizon that our method has. The method is greedy and very short-sighted. It only looks at that node right now. It doesn't take into consideration um, what happens after that. Yeah? So before we actually try building a tree, we don't know how well it will work. Yeah? Um, So-called horizon effect. So these are the three problems. Um, problem one takes a lot of effort. Problem two, um, it's not even worth the effort, probably, because uh, we will do overfitting. And problem three is, well, but given the way that we construct this tree, we really have no way to really know in advance when to stop building the tree and when to stop subdividing things into ever smaller nodes. Okay, so... Um, Problems one and two, nevertheless, yeah, can at least be approximately solved or tackled at least by just introducing s sensible stopping criteria that avoid um, just building a crazy tree with way too many leaves. So um, the first thing is to just limit the overall complexity of your tree. Just say you, you stop once you have, I don't know, say 60 um, leaves or something, 60 terminal nodes, and then you stop. Um, the second idea is that if you're in a node that already has very, very few observations in it, 
it's likely not worth it to try to split that node further. Yeah, so you set a limit and say, well, if my node has, say, less than 20 observations in it or something, I won't even look at it anymore. I'll just say, okay, well, this is a very small part of my data. I'll just leave that and not try to subdivide it further. Yeah. Um, the third point here is related to what I just said. Similarly, any split that would result in a child node with very, very few observations is automatically discarded and we won't attempt it. Yeah. So for example, we'll never split off just the minimum or the maximum of some uh, feature variable or something like that. Yeah, that is not worth it. It won't generalize well, typically. Um, the fourth point here is that we basically ignore very small improvements. So we won't do a split, we won't do any split, unless we, fin we can find a split that does, well, significantly, relevantly better than what we already have. Yeah, so it has to achieve a certain minimal improvement of the empirical risk in the child nodes compared to the empirical risk in a parent node. So we have to improve, say, by at least, I don't know, 10% or something. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we don't think it's worth our time. We'll just stop splitting there. Um, okay, and, well, the last one is not really a stopping criterion. It's just uh, the nature of the method itself. If we are in, in a perfectly pure node where all the observations in that node have the same target value um, or identical value for all the features, well, then there's nothing more we can do there. Yeah. Um, so these are stopping criteria, very important. All of these are hyper parameters of the method that are set to defaults in a concrete given implementation. And you have to be aware what these defaults are and you have to think about whether these defaults are appropriate for your application. Yeah. Um, so that's an important message here too. Um, now, the third problem that we had, so we had the problem of effort, that it's difficult to build a large tree. We had the problem of overfitting, that it may not even be worth it building a very complex tree because then it doesn't generate so well. And the third problem was, well, how do we know when to stop? Okay, so... Um, the stopping criteria also goes some way towards giving us an answer. Well, how do I know when to stop? Now, pruning is a way to solve problem three, finding the optimal size of a tree. By, um, well, <clears throat> so, sorry. <laughs> Limiting the complexity of the tree um, by setting the stopping criteria yeah, is necessary in some sense, but it's a very hard problem. So there are many different stopping criteria that you have to think about. Um, it's, it's hard, so it's really hard to find the best combination. We'll talk much more about the problem in the chapter on hyperparameter tuning. Um, another way to go about this is to set all the stopping criteria to fairly liberal values yeah so that they allow you to build a fairly complex tree so we're building a large complex tree and then we're pruning it back yeah so we, we're cutting off branches um, based on some measure of the performance of the tree yeah so we grow a large tree then we remove the branches um, so that actually the tree has the best predictive performance on a resampling uh, test set, yeah, cross-validation. That's another thing we could do. Um, but we can do even better, well, not better, but we can do it simpler without cross-validation. We, first we grow a large tree and then we remove branches from that tree so that the resulting tree 
both performs fairly well on the training set. Yeah, so that's something that we can easily determine because once we've built the tree, we know the predictions that it would make for every, so to say, sub tree. Um, that's one part that we have. So we want to keep fairly good training set performance, but we also want to reduce the complexity. The complexity of a tree we can very simply count, for example, as the number of terminal nodes. Yeah. And now um, in pruning, we'll put a weight on how important we think this complexity of uh, the tree is. Um, and then we try to minimize <clears throat> the training set performance plus a measure of the complexity. Yeah? So that will pull the tree in different directions. The training set performance will be better for a more complex tree but the complexity obviously will be higher. Yeah, so that basically controls the trade-off. So, and the way, how much weight we put on the complexity, that's uh, the parameter called the complexity parameter. Um, let's take a look at how this works. So say we have built this tree, that's a tree on the Boston housing data set, it's a regression tree. So we have in total four terminal nodes and we have these two internal splits here. So we're using the variable rm twice and the variable lstat once. Yeah, and uh, you can see, well, okay. Um, and now, basically we want to make this tree simpler. Yeah, so we can, we can prune branches. Yeah, we could uh, remove this split here so that basically it only goes right here and left here and then it goes down or we could remove this branch so that we only have a terminal node here and then another branch here or we could remove both of these branches yeah so let's take a look well turns out the if we use a complexity parameter of 0.072 values will depend on the concrete application um, the best subtree for limited complexity with a weight of 0.72 is that one where we just don't do any splits on the right node. Yeah, and then if we reduce that even further, um, well, then also obviously we cut the left branch and we end up with a tree that's basically just this. All right, um, if we remove this even further, we don't do any splits anymore. And that's so to say the end point of our pruning. We've pruned it all back and it's just a stem. All right. Um, that's it for uh, the topic of overfitting trees, basically, and uh, stopping criteria for trees, pruning. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.